Hello there, friends, foes, enemies, men, women, children, and undecided brand new genders. You're not watching the Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Ellen, or the Jimmy Tonight Show. You're watching The Right Show, brought to you by Valuetainment. Today's episode, we talk about Budweiser refusing to hack off horsetails, teens hack into MGM's back end, CNN, the hack network, goes full Republican, and Novak Djokovic has the last laugh. It's all happening right now. Let's go! Let's do a little roll call before we keep going. YouTube subscribers are at 428,000. Thank you very much. 232,000 on Facebook and podcasters. If you're listening, there's probably a link down below. You can watch along with us. You're missing these videos. Videos like this. Vinny, our resident comedian here at the Valuetainment Studios, loves to snack. And we have like a we have a big snack box right in the middle of the office. This guy rifles through it like you've never seen before. We have some insider footage. Uh, take a look at this. They don't have anything. They never have anything good in here. It's like, sorry guys, sorry guys, just no snacks. My bad. Just there's never anything really good. Kelly, I'm really sorry. We're just trying to. Pick a snack. My bad. Jesus Christ. Okay, got it. Got it. Ruffles. Got it. Dude, Sorry, Sorry. just pick a snack, bro. Do you have someone like that in your office? Let us know in the comments. Speaking of which, I want to know a question from you in the comments as well. I want to know where are you from and what is your favorite animal? Mine are those horses, those Budweiser Clydesdales. Those things are amazing. But while we bring that up, let's look at the tour dates right here. I want you to see where I'm going to be so you can come see a live comedy show. D.C., 929 through 30. Edmonton, Canada. And then all over Indiana. Hobart, Fort Wayne, and then Joliet, Illinois. And then Chattanooga and Huntington Beach, California. All that and more is on caveoncomedy.com. Okay, let's get right into it. Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, and Jimmy Colbert, a.k.a. Steven, have started a podcast called Strike Force. Have you heard of it? No one has. Now listen, Strike Force was going to do a big live event and they already had to cancel it. The reason they're canceling? Because they're saying Jimmy Kimmel tested positive for COVID. Um, hello? Who still gets COVID? That is so last year. It sounds like maybe it's a failing podcast that quite possibly they wanted to avoid a little uh, embarrassing situation where they're in a big city, Las Vegas. You got three of the biggest late night show hosts and nobody's in the audience. A little Joe Biden moment, if you will. We don't want to see that. So uh, with that said, uh, it's very ironic that Jimmy Kimmel is the one that's announcing. He's from Las Vegas. He's announcing he has COVID because he is the one, if you'll recall, that kept saying, what? Get the boosty boost or you could get Covefi. He actually advocated that the more boosty boost you get, the less chance you have of getting Covefi. And here he is with a virus that all of us have already kind of dealt with and we've moved on, but not Jimmy. So at this point, his body is, I believe, 70% boosty juice and he's only 30% Kimmel. Watch out for that. The glitz and glamour of the multi-million dollar host without all their production means they're just like us. Podcast versus podcast. The right show versus you, Strike Force. Let's see who wins. And in sporting news, Novak Djokovic ironically wins his 24th Grand Slam title. Why is that of interest? Because Novak's didn't want to get the vax a couple years back. Big, big conspiracy. Uh, they said he could come to Australia and play. When he arrived, they said he had to stay in a hostel. He can't play. Then they said there's a little voucher. He's allowed to just play one game. Very stupid stuff because tennis is the most socially distanced sport in the world. You're literally 200 feet away from the other guy when you're serving the ball. And so that was very interesting. But take a look here. One of the most accomplished athletes on the planet who refused the COVID vaccine has the Moderna shot of the day. Novak Djokovic wins his 24th Grand Slam title. And there it is. They, uh, they showed a video of him. We're not going to show it because of the legal issues there, but they showed him hit the ball and go, congrats, Novak, the Moderna shot of the day. You see what they're doing? Even this guy doesn't want the shot, but they're still putting the Moderna name right next to Novak's name and taking credit for his abilities. Conspiracy theory. But this got a big laugh. Charlie Kirk from none other than 
the uh, great network. This, these are guys I work with all the time, by the way. I go on tour with them as a comedian, and they're just, they're really, really fun. What they do is they, do, they believe in freedom of speech, and they believe in, in doing campus events. So Charlie Kirk put that group on. Let's show this on the screen here. This, he, he writes, this is unreal. Djokovic's game-winning shot was sponsored by Moderna. Now remember, they deported him from Australia, and they banned him from the U.S. Open because he refused the jab. And now, there were a lot of shots that were highly impactful, but Novak's was the best. Hey, I just think that's fantastic. And thank you very much, Charlie Kirk, for putting your group Turning Point USA all over the map so that people can learn from someone like you. But I want you to see the character of a guy like Novak. Look how he kind of interacts with one of the ball boys during the little rainstorm they had. <laughs> that's a moment to remember. Imagine being someone that's kind of working as a ball boy, probably going to be a tennis player himself, but he wants to be in the zone, and he got to sit down. And uh, what a great sense of humor. I'll hold the umbrella for you. Have a drink. Cheers. So congrats to Novax. You did it, and you made them eat crow. Don't worry about the Moderna shot of the day. You had nothing to do with that. Moving right along. We like to do a little segment here called America Going Hard and America Going Soft. And America's gone very soft in one direction. It's a guy named Fetterman. Senator Fetterman. Now, you could have had, Pennsylvania, a doctor, Dr. Oz, representing your state. But instead, you went with this guy. So I thought I'd show you how it all started, okay, and how it's going now. <laughs> this guy cannot even be bothered to get dressed. And if you're saying, well, Kayvon, he had a stroke and he had a little issue... Diane Feinstein, I believe, is close to 90 years old. She's in a wheelchair. Whoever's dressing her gets her frail body into a suit and wheels her in and tells her how to vote. And Fetterman can't be bothered. He shows up with the new activewear line from the TJ Maxx clearance section. So this is what the guy is wearing. I mean, you can't even get into... Uh, Quite a few places dressed like this. I wanted to make a list, and uh, actually, I'm going to talk to camera, too. I want you to put, where could you not get in dressed like Senator Fetterman? Put that in the comments. We're going to be checking for that. Here's my little list. I want, to, I want to let you know. You cannot get into the following places dressed like Senator Fetterman. One, a New York steakhouse. Two, a Vegas nightclub. The third place you could not get in, a holy temple of any type, a low-end country club. If you dress like John Fetterman, you cannot get into any government office in Saudi Arabia. If you dress like John Fetterman, you cannot work here at Valuetainment. And finally, <laughs> if you dress like John Fetterman, you cannot come into my grandma's house. And now we get into our next section, America Going Hard. Now, while Fetterman is dressed in his sloppiest of outfits, we have some very uh, fancy people, the kind of people you don't want to mess with. We found this video of a realtor in uh, New York, I believe, who is kind of an old school guy. And if you buy a house from this guy, you get a few special favors. Take a look at America Going Hard. Tony B here, Ryan White Realty. Here's the deal. If you buy a house, through Island White Realty, at the closing, Tony B will have for you at that closing a certificate gift from me for a 60 inch TV. If you buy a building or a multifamily from Tony B at that closing, you will have a gift ticket for a 75 inch TV. Good deal, my gift to you. If you're interested, give us a call at 718-447-2100, Island Wide Realty. 
We wanted to highlight that guy. He deserves your business. A, you buy a house from me, 60-inch TV. Don't ask where it came from. It's a gift, okay? Now, you buy a building, 85-incher. You do the math. I just thought that was fantastic. Congrats, Tony B. I hope you get a lot of business from the Right Show viewers. Moving right along, uh, we have a senator from New Jersey, probably right next to Tony B, who's getting in a little trouble for some corruption. We went through Bob Menendez's deals, and it turns out he is being brought up for bribery charges. And I read to you on the screen here, Senator Bob Menendez faces growing calls to resign after being indicted on bribery charges this past week. Menendez was indicted alongside his wife, Nadine, and, and they said, we're not going to resign. We're not going anywhere. Now, to catch you up, prosecutors are accusing Menendez and his wife of accepting hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes, cash, lavish gifts, and gold from various people. So we're talking about a Democrat from New Jersey uh, who is corrupt. Any surprise there? I don't think so. Now, leftist reporters are carrying water for this situation because this goes hand in hand with what Biden has been doing as well. You see, you start looking at these people in high positions of power and they're getting gold bars from people. You look at what Hunter was up to. Joe Biden may not have done anything wrong on his own. He sends out a little carrier pigeon, Hunter, to do it for him. Then you catch Hunter and he goes, hey, that wasn't me. I, I don't know what my son was doing. Bad guy, not a joke. So this is how they do it. They kind of sidestep prosecution. Everyone in Senate is above the law. You are not. So we move on to Joe Biden getting caught with a little corruption. Now watch how the Democrat reporters kind of just challenge. This can't be. This didn't happen. Whereas if this was Trump, the reporters would be on the offensive. Right now they're on the defensive. Take a look. What actual evidence do you have as opposed to allegations to show to the American public that would merit an actual impeachment inquiry of Joe Biden and prove that today isn't just about political revenge? This isn't about political revenge. We have the bank accounts. Ma'am, you can see that the homes that the Bidens own can't be afforded on a congressional or Senate salary. You also understand that it's not normal for family members to receive millions of dollars from overseas interests. It's not normal to have 20 shell companies. These things are not normal, and it alludes to not only just widespread corruption, but money laundering, if not influence peddling itself. And we also have the vice president at the time on record saying that the prosecutor was fired. Well, son of a bitch, the prosecutor was fired, right? Because the prosecutor was going after the, the company that his son was working on. That's what we have. If you can't see that, if you are, if you are that blunt, look, I'll turn it over to the attorneys. People can't see that. They think it's political revenge. It's because you don't report on it. Oh, you don't report on it. You can't handle the truth. Well, that was fantastic. And that is a congressperson from Pennsylvania. And that's where Biden claims he's from. Scranton. I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Not a joke. So if anyone knows about the corruption, it's that guy. He's from the home state. Speaking of Joe Biden, he's down 10% in the polls. Washington Post poll. If there were an election today, Trump would win. That's what they're claiming. Kind of hard to believe because the Washington Post is not known to kind of be on the side of a, a Trump win in that respect. So we found uh, Biden tried to catch up with him, but he's too busy being racist yet again. Watch what he says about blacks and Hispanics. How can you guys vote for this? We've seen record lows in unemployment, particularly, and I've focused on this my whole career, particularly for African-Americans and Hispanic workers and veterans. You know, the workers without high school diplomas, the lowest unemployment rate in 70 years for yeah. women now. Yeah, yeah, we're doing, we're doing pretty good. We, we have record unemployment uh, rates for uh, people, uh, blacks and Hispanics that, you know, people that can't get diplomas. Hello? Some of the highest educated people with the most diplomas are black women coming out of college at record rates to this day. But his operating system is kind of like, yeah, you know, there's the iPhone 1, the iPhone 12, the iPhone 15. This guy is pre-Nokia. All right, moving right along. Speaking of uh, record rates, illegal immigration coming like you've never seen it before. And I saw a great quote online. When you are fleeing something for safety, you bring the women and children. And when you are going to war, you send only the men. Take a look at this train coming in illegally. And who do you see on it?
so we call that a sausage fest, one-way cargo train. I, I think the women are probably catching the next train. There was probably some misunderstanding, but those are who are coming in at record rates. And because of this, CNN, the woke network, is going full Republican. Even the governor of New York says we have to do something. They didn't need to do anything when the immigrants were coming to Arizona or, of course, Texas. But now that they're coming into New York, this is a problem. We have to let the word out that when you come to New York, we're not going to have more hotel rooms. We don't have capacity. So we have to also message properly that we're at our limit. If you're going to leave your country, go somewhere else. But the smarter thing is to apply for asylum before you leave your country. That is tough stuff. So there you go. Now they're sounding kind of like what Donald Trump was saying, but he was a big, fat, crazy orange racist when they say it. Well, we're just being uh, very diligent in our laws. Yes. Well, that caused Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson to become a Republican. This is a African-American gentleman, Democrat, his whole life. He just switched. This might have been the worst kept secret at Dallas City Hall. Eric Johnson has hinted at this for a while now. In June, Johnson had Republican Senator John Cornyn administer the oath of office for Johnson's second term. He also invited Ted Cruz as a distinguished guest. Republicans lavished praise on Johnson for switching parties. Governor Abbott posting this on X. Texas is getting more red every day. Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson switches to Republican Party. The governor said he's pro-law enforcement and won't tolerate leftist agendas. Two of the 10 largest cities in America now have Republican mayors, and they are both in Texas, he wrote. By the way, the other big city is Fort Worth. Mayor Matty Parker there, a longtime Republican. Democrats, though, dismissed Johnson's announcement. The state party chairman saying in part, this announcement is neither surprising nor unwelcome. But the voters of Dallas, he said, deserve to know where he stood before he ran for re-election as mayor. Johnson wasn't honest with his constituents, the state chairman said, and knew that he would lose to a Democrat if he flipped before the election. Johnson did run unopposed. but. What does all this mean in a literal sense? At City Hall, probably not much. Technically, mayors and city councils in Texas are nonpartisan, even though those folks likely vote their political ideology. The question is, does Eric Johnson stay on as Dallas mayor for the next four years, or does he run for something else with his new party label? Former Dallas mayors Tom Leppard and Ron Kirk tried that unsuccessfully, but they did not switch parties. I'm Very interesting. So we have some people switching their genders and then now people switching their party. That Democrat became a Republican, a black Republican of that, which now brings the total amount of black Republicans to 17 in America if you're keeping score. Good work. With that said, we have a feminist who's being interviewed on the street and she basically put her own foot in her mouth. She was saying that women are not paid enough, and the gentleman brought up a great point. Why not just hire only women and then fire the men? It looks a little something like this. Companies, if companies can pay women less, yes. why don't they hire all women? Well, that's a whole nother story. Really? I, under, I understand your, your, your argument, uh -huh. and I understand that you're angry. I'm not angry. I no, can no. hear it in your voice. Listen I'm not to angry. your voice. I'm hearing now my you, voice, and I sound pretty calm. You have now shifted the quality of your voice, and I thank you for that. Okay. And you've just given me a condescending look, and that's another reason why we need feminism. And now I'm done, and thank you right. so much. That was gaslighting. You watched it in real time. The gentleman said, if companies can uh, get the same work out of a woman, why not just hire them, pay them less, and then fire the men? Mm, your voice is angry. I don't like your voice. That is a sign that you had a fantastic argument. That's what that was right there. Good work, sir. Bud Light keeps sticking it to themselves. What am I talking about? Well, we all know the Dylan Mulvaney incident where this uh, gentleman put on a kind of a weird outfit and looked like Audrey Hepburn and Bud Light sent them a tailor-made can. How many of you would like to have a can of beer with your face on it? Or maybe put Donald Trump on the can and say, congrats, Mr. President. They didn't do any of that. They sent a can in a marketing effort to Dylan Mulvaney who was celebrating his 365th day being a woman. It feels great. And acted like kind of like a very, like a girly man kind of a thing. So that got the people up in arms. They took the can, they threw it, they smashed it. And they could have learned a valuable lesson that maybe this is not the right advertisement for this product. 
You see, everything's got a product. It'd be like if Tampax wanted to put Donald Trump on the cover of the boxes and says, let him grab you by the hoo-ha, wouldn't work. So you just gotta know your audience and that's what they forgot to do. So Budweiser put Dylan Mulvaney, Tampax should put Trump, but instead Budweiser is doubling down. They're now going full LGBTQ. They have decided that the original marketing effort was just not quite understood. And advocacy groups are asking employees within Budweiser to please speak up and ask for more. And Budweiser is doing that. They're going to be sponsoring an LGBTQ festival. So this is going to be the gay beer of choice in the years to come. And Budweiser has done it yet again. Advocacy and animal rights groups have asked Budweiser to stop cropping the tails of the famous Clydesdale horses. I'm going to read this to you. Budweiser has agreed for the animal rights groups. They said, we will stop cutting the tails off the Clydesdale horses used in our commercials. Now, why is that interesting? Because the reason you chop off the tail is because these are working horses. They don't want their tail to get stuck in the rigging, in the stagecoach, and cause an injury or some sort of an accident. So that's why they do it. They don't just do it for fun. But I just thought that's very interesting that with Anheuser-Busch, it is not okay to chop the horse's tail, but you can chop your son's front. So, okay, so be good to the horse's backside, be bad to your little boy's front side. That's why they're calling them Transheiser Bush. We'll be back with a whole lot more right after this. Chuck Todd has officially stepped down from his show. He was the host of a show called Meet the Press. And now that he's unemployed, he's probably going to be like CNN's Jeffrey Tubin and press the meat on his own couch with nothing better to do. And our next story. We have teens who are able to pull off a cyber attack on MGM Casino. I can't believe this. These teenagers were able to hack their way in to the back office of uh, MGM and pull off a cyber attack where they were able to get billions of dollars of cryptocurrency and uh, it's just fantastic. Part of the trend that has alarmed security experts is that these are ransomware gangs that can do this to almost any company. How crazy is that? These teenagers are spending their time trying to get their way in to major companies cyberspace. When I was a teenager, I was just trying to work my way in to my girlfriend's bra. So I guess we've come a long way. These kids are very advanced, but they don't want to take a girl on a date. They'd rather just uh, hack their way into MGM. Don't quite get it myself. And our final story of the day. If you ever find yourself in trouble with the law, maybe there's a DUI situation, I want you to hear the wise words of our former president, Donald Trump. And if you can say this to the police officer, you might be able to walk, but you gotta be convincing just like this. Not a drinker. I can honestly say I never had a beer in my life, okay? Right. It's one of my only good traits. I don't drink. <laughs> Whenever they're looking for something good, I say, I never had a glass of alcohol. I've never had alcohol. I've just, you know, for whatever reason. Can you imagine if I had what a mess I'd be? <laughs> Would I be the, I'd be the world's worst. That's what you say. Officer, I don't drink. I have never had a beer in my life. If I did, imagine how I'd be much worse. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is The Right Show, a support group for normal people. We don't really like the news, but we cover it in a way that's a little more palatable, and we try to have fun with it. Until next week, remember, like, subscribe, be sure to click the notification bar, and we're going to keep awakening America up with laughter, and we're going to keep telling the truth through comedy. It's all happening here on The Right Show. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>